first thing I'm going to do is install this bracket that my uh, radio antenna goes on. Good morning and uh, welcome to another Memphis Monday. If you're uh, a regular viewer, uh, welcome, uh, welcome back. And if you're new here, uh, here at Memphis Monday, we do we do about everything from woodworking to mechanical to home improvement to do it yourself uh, to inventions and the whole business. Well, today we're having a little follow up vic uh, video from last week. Last week we installed this new seat. Uh, today we're going to do some work, uh, some work on the boat, uh, on the boat, and try to get it started. It's been in storage for pushing two years and uh, so it might be problematic trying to get it started and uh, working but we're going to do all that stuff and we're going to test um, test the motor on the hard and then we're going to take it to the uh, river and uh, take it for a cruise so today we'll count it as a victory if we can get this thing in the water so get excited because Hopefully, we're getting underway. I didn't go completely through the epoxy when I flattened this uh, gunnel out, but I'm uh, still going to install. I'm still going to install the 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 bracket using. Uh, some of this uh, silicone Here I'm putting a notch in the uh, bilge floorboard because my gas line isn't reaching my tank. I like to use the uh, router table whenever I can because it makes it such a uh, nice edge. I didn't want to mess around with the fuel system, so this is a, a con completely conventional fuel system. Uh, this is a an electric fuel pump, 12 volt. This is the gas line. This is just a standard outboard motor gas line. It goes down, goes under the bilge. Let's go to the back and see where it comes out, and comes out of the comes out of the floor. Right there at that notch. In we order just to understand in. the uh, battery hookup, I think it's uh, nice to start where the battery leads are going. These are that's the positive uh, positive lead right there, the red one, and that's the ground right there. And those two connect to the battery. They go down and then through a conduit conduit to where the battery's going to go. We'll go there in a minute. Those go into two studs. There's a negative stud. There's a positive stud. And then those studs are connected uh, by cable to uh, two positive, two positive uh, bus bars. This is the run, main run bus. This is all the gauges in the engine and the starter and everything that goes on the run bus. Then down here, this is the this is the aux bus. Okay, I got the battery all uh, connected up. I've shown you this because uh, I just want you to see that the battery is in a closed. It's got a you know it's not airtight. Uh, by any means, but it has a watertight uh, hatch over the top of it so it keeps the uh, dirt and debris and sun and rain and so forth off of it, which is important for a battery. And now setting up the bim bimini is just as easy as taking it down.
here we are on the other side of the boat. That is the fitting I, uh, I installed to, uh, as a water pickup for the engine cooling. And I got it rigged up. Dude, where all I got to do, take this fitting and screw it in here and then attach a hose to this other end. That right end. there is called the strut bearing and that is water cooled and so you can't have that propeller uh, spinning around too much on the dry because uh, you'll burn out that strut. Another there. reason you can't run it too long on, unless it's in the water is, see that thing right there? That's the, um, it's, it's called a, it's a through hole, but it's a packing gland. See, there's a nut right there. You tighten that nut down, and that's got some uh, material in it that squeezes against that shaft and keeps the dry side dry and keeps the water on the right side of the hull. Well, unless it's in the water, that packing gland is dry and you don't want to run it dry because it'll scar your shaft and burn out your packing gland. If I ever leave this thing uh, at a dock somewhere, I don't have to worry about anybody stealing it because uh, Thing's too complicated for anybody to start it unless they're awful clever. Uh, you got to make sure that the this is the aux breaker switch right there. That's got to be on. That's the main ignition breaker right there. And you come around here to the uh, dashboard and. Um, there's a the fuel pump, it's on its own circuit right there. So right now it's off, now it's on. Uh, this is ignition over here, and all that ignition all that ignition basically does is send uh, hot uh, hot wire to the uh, to the coil. Let's see if it starts. Ignition on, fuel pump on, there's the starter. pounds of oil pressure cruising at 1500 rpm water temp is 130 Right after I turned the camera off, uh, the boat died. I don't know what the problem is. I'll show you what it does. I think I got it clogged up. I think I got a clog, clogged up uh, carburetor. Well, I went to hook up my trolling motor so I could get back to the docks, but somebody had worked on this uh, cable that slides into the back of that emergency battery, 
and they made one cable longer than the other, and so it doesn't slide into the slots. So I've got to untape it. I think it was the, uh, I think it was that old guy with the gray, with the gray beard. Let's turn on the AC unit and take a look at that carburetor. Uh, the good news is the carburetor doesn't appear to be dirty. And the bad news is that the carburetor doesn't seem to be uh, dirty. And I say good news and bad news because if, if the carburetor is not clogged, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know where to turn. Let me show you what I suspect happened. My theory is that some dirt got caught in this fixed main jet. What happens is the gasoline comes in through, a, this, is the, this is the float valve right here, controlled by this float. And so this chamber right here is filled with gas. Then all the gas to run the engine goes through this what's called the main passage right here but then it goes through this fixed main jet right here and it's a real tiny hole uh, you know 64 I'm doing here is installing the float valve the float valve and the float valve seat are both perfect Okay, now the the top and the bottom go together. Pretty simple, but like most simple things, a lot of thought had to go into. You can't it. have gasoline leaking out of a carburetor in a boat, obviously. So they have designed this well. In this uh, float chamber, the gas stays below that gasket right there. So it can't, uh, even, if that, even if that gasket fails, the uh, gas not gonna leak out. Okay, let's install this bad boy. Like working on most vehicles, the hard part is usually getting to whatever it is you're working on. No difference here. Okay, here's the scam. I, uh, I got that carburetor installed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try to start it here in the garage. Uh, of course, we can only run it for few seconds but uh, we'll be able to tell the change if if this was a fix and if it does fix it we'll take it out on the grass and run it with the hose connected fuel pump on ignition on Okay, let's take it out of the grass. And, uh... Okay, it's been running for over a half an hour now, so I don't know what else to tell you. The next time I have this issue, see that little half inch 
screw right there, bolt. I'm just going to take that plug out and what will happen is then the gas from the bowl will run out that uh, hole and probably clean out whatever junk is uh, clogging up the carburetor. Alrighty, so I guess uh, we need to take this bad boy to the back, in, back to the big water. Got the floor fixed. Got that emergency battery fixed. I got the GPS and radio uh, hooked up and working. And I got my radio antenna we installed. So let's take it out and see if she if she runs. sitting in a uh, lawn chair. I took the seat out. Well, there you have it. Um, it took us a couple of days, but we finally got the boat back in commission. Uh, ran perfect. I forgot my tripod, so I really didn't get very good video, but uh, you did see the uh, river that I take it to. So, thanks for watching. Make sure you uh, comment and like and all that business. I think, uh, I think next week we're going to do some, uh, some uh, camping stuff. So, uh, get excited and I'll see you next week.